we're going to look at building a flowchart off of a user story. Now, as we've mentioned, flowcharts can get very big and complicated, and therefore they're not used a lot out in industry. However, one thing a flowchart does very well is it helps us take a complex problem and learn how to break it down to small steps. And that's something that a computer needs because computers can only do one thing at a time and do very simple things. So we've got to take the complicated process that we handle as a human and break it down into simple processes that the computer can understand. Let's take a quick look at our user story. Our user story is very simple. It says a user should be able to calculate the kinetic energy of an object. Now, a lot of times when we get a user story like this, there's going to be a little bit of information that's missing. And so we'll have to figure out what it is. In this case, there's two separate things. The first thing is that we need to know what is kinetic energy. And because a computer programmer very rarely operates in a bubble, we have to work with other sources, whether they be a physicist or a business manager or accountant. In this case, we need some physics background. So we provide a formula for you to use. Kinetic energy equals one half mass times the velocity squared. Looking at a user story, we see that we're going to know about an object. So we're going to need to get the mass of that object and we're going to need to get its velocity. That's what the M and the V are inside of our kinetic energy formula. So let's quickly work through a flowchart to see how we're going to build this. We're in Microsoft Word because that's a nice and simple way to build a flowchart. You could also do this by hand, of course, but since we have the tools, we're going to use them. I'm going to come to my Insert tab and choose Shapes. And I come down to my flowchart, and the first thing I'm going to do is pick the Terminator. Some places call it a terminal. It's just a semantic situation. We're going to pick that and draw it on our screen. With it highlighted, we can type inside of it, and we're going to type Start. Now I'm going to go back to my Insert, choose Shapes, and I'm going to get the information that I need. So I always want to make sure I have all of my information that I need in order to calculate a response. So I'm going to choose an input-output shape. Uh, in this case, Microsoft calls it a data shape. It's the parallelogram. And for simplicity, as a good way to train yourself, I always want to label, is this input or output? So I'm going to say in colon, and then what am I inputting? In this case, I'm going to input the mass. Choose another input shape. In this case, I'm going to choose velocity. Once I have my mass and my velocity, I can run my equation. So insert shapes. I'm going to choose a process shape, which is a rectangle. I'm going to simply say Ke, short for kinetic energy, equals. 0 0.5 times the mass times velocity and I'm going to use the caret or shift 6 it looks like a little upward pointing arrow and that's a common thing that a lot of programming languages use for doing exponents because I need to square that value. Now not every programming language is going to use that caret in some cases, you'll see a double star like you do in Python. Other languages are going to use a function that's built in called POW for power. It just kind of depends upon the language you're using. Once we have that answered, we're going to go and insert another object. Once again, we're using a parallelogram, but this time we're going to output our response. And we're just going to specify Ke because that's what we set our kinetic energy. Once this is done, we're going to need our last shape, which is going to be our terminator. 
that's going to specify that we're at the end of our flow charts. The only thing missing at this point is a series of lines connecting our shapes, showing our flow. I'm just copying and pasting my shapes because I find it a little bit easier to do that way. If I draw these by hand, I'm always doing them as I make my shapes from one to the next. Or if I'm going to be doing a decision statement, which we'll look at later, I always do them then. That way I never get lost. But in a simple case like this, where it's just starting at one end and going all the way through, I'll add my flow lines separately. As you can see, this is a real simple flow chart. We're breaking down our user story into simple individual components that the computer can understand. From this, we can convert this into a program very easily because we have the individual steps. And this is a process that we want to learn when building a flowchart, whether it's simple like this or it's complicated with loops and decisions and things of that nature.